So we're almost at the stage now where we can test our app and run it in the browser and hopefully be able to add, update, delete student records uh, in our working web application. But before we do that, in my example app, as I mentioned before, I already have a database that I need to delete. Otherwise the ensure created functionality won't create the database that I need with the student tables and the enrollments tables and the courses tables. So if you haven't enabled identity and didn't follow the steps earlier in the tutorial, then you won't have a database. That's fine. You can probably proceed to the next step. But at this point, I want to show you how we can check where our database is. And to do this, we use the SQL uh, Server Object Explorer. And in Visual Studio, how we access that is under the View menu, and we've got SQL Server Object Explorer. Uh, now you can see this is expanded already. When you open it for the first time, you'll likely see something like this. So you'll just see SQL Server and possibly another folder. So what you need to do is open up uh, the, the tree menu and more than likely if you're using the default Visual Studio settings, you'll be looking at the local DB MS SQL local DB SQL server. And if we open that up, you'll then get databases. And once that's loaded, as you can see here, there is one database that's related to John's test project in my example. And let's just double check the app settings.json file because I want to show you how this relates to the database file that was created. So you can see in app settings.json, the server is specified as local DB, MS SQL local DB, which is the server that's specified here. Then the database that's created uh, is this database name which ASP.NET and then the project name and then a long hash. And this is exactly the database that's been created. So this is how the config file matches up to the database that's created on our local machine. So let's open up this database. And when we do, we'll be able to see a tables folder. And if we open that, now in my case, I have quite a few tables here and you can see that they all relate to identity. So you can see that they're actually related to users, user roles, user logins, etc. There's also a migrations history because to create all of these tables, we use a database migration as part of ASP.NET identity. Let me just demonstrate what the users table looks like, for example. So if you right click on it, you can view data. And what we should see is a single record of the user that we registered when we tested the app earlier. Okay, cool. So now we have ASP.NET users table opened in a SQL Server Object Explorer and we are viewing the data. And as expected, we can see one active row that has a long ID and then the username is john at test.com and then we have some other fields with such uh, data as the password hash so not the password as plain text but essentially this is the user record that i registered when i tested the app earlier so what we're going to do now is actually delete this database so that we can let the app do its thing and ensure uh, use the ensure created functionality to create the tables we want for the student data so to delete this database, all we need to do is right click on the database and we can delete it. It will then ask us just to double check, are we happy to do that? Uh, it's best practice to close existing connections as well. So this is a permanent deletion. Now the good thing is we don't need this database. We don't need the user record that's in it. We can regenerate it again at a later date with, with a migration and the user registration details that I submitted are not key information. So in this example, on our local development, we don't need to worry about deleting this database. Let's close that window. And so we have a clean setup now with no data. And what we're gonna do now is try and run the app. So let's hit run. <laughs> 